of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air can come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left that place. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So Jesus talks about a mustard seed and a hidden treasure and some yeast and some pearls and all this stuff. And then he said, do you understand all this? And they answered, uh, Yes. What do you think Jesus did then? My guess is he laughed. Because how many of us really do understand all these various metaphors of what Jesus talks about as he tries to, to unpack and unfold the kingdom of heaven in our midst? As he talked about this mustard seed, my guess is people, he had people laughing pretty much right off the bat because you see, he talked about a mustard seed as being the smallest of all the seeds and, and these folks were agrarian. They knew what mustard seeds looked like and they knew they weren't the smallest seed. And so Jesus, some smallest seed here, he was probably smiling right there as, as, as they imagine a mustard seed. We all know mustard seeds are small, but they're, they're by far not the smallest seed I've ever seen. I don't know about you. Here Jesus says the smallest seed. And then he talks a little bit more about uh, the seed that's, that's planted and grows into a shrub. And the shrub becomes a mighty tree. And people are really laughing by now because I don't know about you, but how many of you have seen a shrub morph into a tree? Doesn't happen very often. In my very limited understanding of, of, of agrarian society, a shrub is a shrub, a tree is a tree. And the folks in Jesus' day would have heard this word tree as a symbol, an image of strength and power. A tree that the prophet Ezekiel dreamed about and hoped about and, and, and prophesied about. A tree that would one day rise up and it would be a power, God's power and empire and kingdom coming back and gaining power so the people of Israel will not have to be simply birds in an empire, but the tree empire themselves. A tree, and here Jesus is calling this mustard shrub, this mighty tree, that would hold other nations as a tree holds a bird. They have to be laughing or shaking their heads or saying, Jesus, you're nuts. And then to top that off, did you hear what he said about how this mustard seed grew? He says, it's a seed that someone took and sowed in his field. And here, he would have to be laughing, as would those who heard him, heard him, because you see, no one in Jesus' day, unless they had a field way, way, way far away, no one would deliberately take mustard seed and sow it. Because you see, they all knew this. Jesus knew this. A mustard seed, a mustard shrub, a mustard bush is a weed. A weed that when it is planted, 
germinates quickly and begins to grow and spread and take over. Early in around Jesus' day, there was a naturalist, Pliny the Elder, who actually talked about the mustard seed and said the wild mustard seed is one that we don't, that is very wild, and although it has some medicinal values, you don't, it can destroy a crop. The, the, Jewish, uh, the Jewish teachings and writings warned people not to grow mustard in their garden because it would soon take over the rest of the garden. Everybody knew that. And here Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven as being this weed. We know this too. If you just go online and look up mustard seed, you would quickly find, for example, that in the state of Indiana, Purdue University says that the mustard, the wild mustard, is the fourth most invasive plant there is in this state. In other, in other uh, parts, you look it up, and I looked up a website here that talks about the mustard seed, and this is an area which grows canola, and what it says is this. It says, wild mustard is a serious weed problem. Because you see, the canola seeds look like mustard seeds, and if you, if you, if you sow them together, you might get a mustard seed growing in there that would quickly germinate, quickly spread, if you're not careful, even if you are careful, and take over the canola crop, and it would bring much havoc to your field and render it much less valuable. This article goes on to say this. Wild mustard is a serious weed of a cultivated land. You don't want to mess with mustard weeds. Wild mustard is a curious weed of cultivated land, and maybe that's what Jesus was talking about when he compared the kingdom of heaven to mustard. If wild mustard is a serious weed of cultivated land, then perhaps Jesus is saying that the kingdom of God is serious weed of a cultivated life. Now, I don't know about you, but I kind of like my life cultivated. I like to be in control of my life. I like the order. I like to know where I'm going. I like directions. I like to know where my children are. I like to be able to, to kind of plan out where my life is going. I was raised by a family that cultivated me with certain values. I like a cultivated life. And here's Jesus saying is, the kingdom of God is like a weed of a cultivated life. It gets into your life and starts destroying what you think you had because you see, it will have control. It'll get into your life and change you, Jesus says. Kind of like it changed a man named Mark Huffman. You might have seen the article in yesterday's paper. A man who has, whose life was cultivated by, what, by uh, dealing drugs and taking drugs. That was his life, his lifestyle, in and out of jail. Didn't change him at all. He, and he knew what he wanted in life until the kingdom of God came to him, invaded his life while he was in prison for the fifth time. And the article says, when that happened... When God invaded his life, he was changed for good. And today, you'll see the article talking about, and actually, Bruce will have copies of the article at, in, at each door. That'll be one of our Sunday School topics next week about when the kingdom of God becomes a serious weed of a cultivated life, even if that life cultivated is a life of crime. The kingdom of God is a serious weed in the life of someone, was a serious weed in the life of somebody like the Apostle Paul, who cultivated a life of righteousness, a life where, of education, a life where he knew what he was called to do, to get rid of the riffraff that are ruining his religion. And yet, when that seed, that weed of God's realm, entered his soul and spirit, it changed him, for he was one that could now see the world in a whole different way. That's what a weed of God's kingdom will do.
like it did to a man named Millard Fuller. You know who Millard Fuller is. He was he lived a cultivated life, cultivated by, by, uh, by making profit, by selling stocks, by building a business from the ground up, making millions, having, hunt, having cars and jet setting, until that seed of God's kingdom was planted and germinated in his soul, and he realized he needed to sell it all and began something called Habitat for Humanity. The realm of God is a serious weed of a cultivated life. Like it was for a woman named Sarah Miles. Now Sarah Miles was a woman who had a great life. She had many friends. She was a journalist uh, who covered wars and revolutions in Central America. She was an atheist, happily so. She, uh, when she gathered with, with her friends, uh, religion was really not part of the topic of conversation unless they looked down on, the, on those who purported a belief, seeing them as narrow-minded and bigoted. And yet, one day, because she was curious, she said, she was walking by a church in a neighborhood near the Mission District of San Francisco, a little Episcopal church, and she was kind of struck by, by the sign on the outside that talked about prayer and this amazing kind of mosaic on the outside, and she said, I'm just going to step in and see what that church is like inside. She stepped in, and lo and behold, there were people about that time walking up for, to receive communion. And so she just... I guess because they welcomed her, walked on up and received the communion bread and, and the cup. And from that moment on, her life changed. Sarah, at that moment on, felt fed for the first time. The landscape of her carefully cultivated life and belief had been invaded by something called the realm of God. It had germinated in her soul and had already taken control of her as she, as she consumed it. It consumed her and became part of who she was. She loved being fed in that little church. And she said, why shouldn't everybody have this feeling of being fed? And she so wanted everybody to know they're fed. And then she started noticing people hanging out outside. Hungry people. People strung out on drugs and alcohol. And she thought, why shouldn't they have this same sense of being fed that I have here? And so she started something. She said, I want people to be fed just like I've been fed. And what she wrote in an interview was this. She said that, she said this, I walked into this church. I was a stranger. I had, if anything, only the rudest thoughts about the people who were welcoming me. I got fed, and my life got changed. And I thought, I want to keep doing this for other people. And so, I went to my vestry and asked if we could start a food pantry in the church. Now, she didn't want a food pantry up in some closet someplace hidden away. The food pantry she started in that church began on the communion table. And on, to this day, when you walk into that church, you will see piles of produce, of cereal, of bread, of canned goods, of um, soups, surrounded by loaves and cups and candles and music and people come in and not only their bodies fed but their souls and spirits are fed because you see the kingdom of God is a serious weed and a cultivated life. It can change you. 
try as we might to rein it in or fight it or control it, and we can sure try that, can't we? We could also do something else. We can let go and let that weed germinate in our lives and see what happens. Amen.